Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the lasses of Europe, using a special mod, of course, called the Second West Russian War for Heart Divine 4. But I'm your host, Mr. Central Siberian Federation Lover, and as you can see, we've already gone in and started beating the crap out of the Divine Man of Siberia. They've taken a casual, cool 135,000 casualties, while we've lost about 6,000, so, I mean, this is not really, I don't say fair, but at the same point, like... It's not bad. It's going pretty darn well for us. I literally have no... We literally have no issues here. Uh, our Baicheval project was successful. was Berkut. And we're still doing right now. Prodoka. So, overall, um, we're just going in. We're beating the crap out of the uh, Alexander men. And just... Just enjoying ourselves. Like... Just enjoying ourselves. We've got some comps to go through. But I did want to say, like... I'm not exactly sure why the developers for the Second West Russian War decided to go with Shushkin's Novosobiersk for the content for the Second West Russian War. I will say, though, like, I can see why that maybe they chose it just because Nova Spirsk isn't super difficult to play as, which I'm totally okay with. I am totally, totally okay with that, so. Um, oh, yes, poverty, yes, 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 please. Um, but just, yeah, I think I can see why they probably went down that route, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. And I'm deleting some of these divisions just because I want some of that manpower back, but, yeah, it's not great for that. But, overall, oh, an airbase. Ah, we love airbases, actually. Do we have superiority? Yeah, we really... Yeah. They're shooting us down a little bit, but... Overall, not too shabby. And I guess we're doing some stuff here, which will be very important for when we attack the Germans. And we might as well do it now, just because... We're, we're, while we don't have the biggest industrial base yet, once we start unifying a lot of these areas, like... That's going to be pretty good for us. Uh, let's, let's be real. It's going to be pretty darn good for us, though. So. Anti-tank is very good. Happy 69, everybody. 69, 69, 69. Nice. Um... Honestly, go right here. Beat the crap out of these guys. You guys go... Where'd you go? Oh, there you are. So you can just go over there, and then you can cut these guys off, but you probably won't be able to because you're crossing the river. Oh, that's sad. Come on. Hey! Inter going to destroy. Hey! Battle industry going too. Excellent. 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 And now we're on factory complexes. Uh, what else do we have here? Anything else? Oh, yes. Advanced construction might as well... It's not really worth it, but why not? We need a lot of political power to save save up a lot of political power for coring stuff, but... Uh, next up, like, mass mechanization. We're going to have ma modern agricultural very... Modern agriculture very soon, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. So I'm not, I'm never worried about agriculture and stuff. Go and grab that because you can. And the port of Magadan captured. Beautiful, my friends. And let's go and integrate all these areas. There you go. And now... I want to say, give it a few more days, and maybe we might be able to get another one of these done, but... Oh! Eh, political thought's not that bad. Not great, but whatever. Um, and then we'll go and reunify this entire area. Yeah, let's go and do it. Why not? Second Siberian War? Nope. And they declared war on us. Like, I made sure that we were at peace, so... More stability for the nation. Now we'll be known as the Siberian Federation, my friends. Ah, beautiful. The next step unlocked. Honestly, we could peacefully reunify, but you know what? We might as well just go in hard, fast, because there's no other type of way to go in. And just core these people as fast as possible. Uh, wait, can we exert influence? Yeah, I might as well, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I might as well try to do that one. So, so be your mandate. Um, yeah, let's do this one first. If you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. Uh, actually, there's a glorious feature. I can't remember if I read this, so. I feel like we I have. Spreading the SIB plan. Ooh, I don't remember. The Volan Commands? I'll read anyways. After the years of struggle, the unthinkable has been achieved. The vastness of Siberia has been unified, or reunified, under one flag. Securing this much of Russia has been no easy feat. To secure a hold, we have to fight off every level of Russia's past, from monarchs, monarchist fanatics to fascist thugs in Soviet holdouts. We have vanquished them all, and now stand triumphant as the masters of the East and rightful government of all Russia. The conquest of Siberia has taken its toll on us. Russia remains fractured, but even now, we are already one of the largest nations on Earth, and administering a territory this massive requires a strong and stable government. We should take this opportunity to secure a hold and ensure that our administration is prepared for the tasks that lie ahead. The final unification with the West is near, or one way or another. We will not be caught unprepared. But if you like to read about the atomic stuff, please go right ahead. If this is kind of generico stuff. This always happens, so... Oh, it's a budget boost. That's fine. Oh, yeah, we have more lines to build cities in. As long as there's still space to build in, we actually have an end of wonders. But what I was trying to say is that now we have more manpower, which is great. Okay, maybe that's a bit too much. As much as I'd love to make that many divisions, let's go down to 16? 16-ish? Why not? Are we losing political power? Yes, we are. And achievement arrives. Oh, look at this! If you're wondering about this, please go right ahead. Ah, uh, I love America. 
Pokrushkin tossed the report on his desk in disgust. It was a general overview of the situation in the Far East and Siberia. Reading through it had been a dash all traces of optimism he had felt about the region. It wasn't all bad, to be fair. Controlling the port town of Magadan finally gave them access to the sea, and with a little investment, Irkutsk could become a major economic and industrial hub. But, as always, aside from his few scattered bright spots like those reported, there was nothing but bad news. The fires had always been difficult to administer, even for a united Russian nation. Now he had attempted the same task with far less resources than the Empire of the Union had been able to fuel. And on top of everything else, there was the main topic of the report. Partisans. Oh no, not those bloody bloody partisans. Based on the earlier reports alone, Pokrishkins, security experts were telling him, there are no less than eight organized radical terrorist organizations operating in the Far East, and possibly as many as a dozen. They came in all stripes. <clears throat> Fascists, communists, monarchists, anarchists, zealots, Cossacks, oh boy, separatists, and more. Besides, the only reason they hadn't already collapsed the entire East into partisan warfare was because they spent as much time fighting each other as the central government. The report warned that might not be the case forever. The longer they are allowed to exist, the more likely it is that they, like minded groups, will form a common front against a newly formed Russian Federation. This cannot, of course, be allowed to happen. But Kurshkin picked up the phone and started dialing the number. If consolidating Central Siberia had taught him anything, it was that there was only one way to deal with radicals. They were so wrapped up in their own meaningless theories and ideologies that they even barely lived in this real world, and that made them too dangerous to tolerate. They would be dragged out of their holes and brought into the light where the people of Russia could see them for what they were, not brave partisans, but desperate terrorists with no place in the new Russia. There is no room for mercy here, and as you can see, we're building up a lot of land forts here, so... Actually, go and do this too. It's fine. And yeah, let's go back. Let's get some more political power. Let time go on as we are building up more cities. There you go. Nice. Military intervention. We're just going to go straight in. I don't, I don't want to wait. Give us more consumer goods. Oh, there goes Egypt. Oh, beautiful. Auto classes in Egypt. Oh, no. Reaffirm our commitments. With the uh, sudden expansion of our territory and our associated advance of the world stage, eyes across the world are studying us. Watching for our next move to see what it signals, we must show them that we are still the same government they learned to trust. Our impending reunification of Russia has not changed any of our agreements, and we are still happy to do business with the other nations of the world. The acquisition of Russia's longest coastline and several devo developed ports have made the matter to trade much easier. The nations and companies who have already invested in Russia are excitedly offering to expand further operations. Meanwhile, from Tokyo to Washington, we have gained the attention of government and business alike. It's time to double down on our message, and while everyone is watching, Russia is open for business. If you want to about Project Prodokia, please go right ahead. They will learn to feel the skies. Oh, great, more attack. Air range factor. Bomber speed and attack. Awesome. What's not to love? And reaffirm our commitments, of course. Beautiful. Even more divisions. Ah, throw them on, men. Throw on those boys. And if you want, come on, hang out in Kazakhstan, because everyone loves Kazakhstan this time of year. Alright, since we're here, go ahead and do uh, do this one. Get more output. Get more fax factories in the state. We have a port that we're not going to use, except for convoys. Awesome. And we need way more tanks. APCs are fine. Uh, artillery is looking actually pretty bad, so we need more of that. And, and this is looking fine, too. Go to 5. Actually, go to 10. Go to 10. But put you underneath the tanks. Tokyo standoff, very nice. Oh. And... We have the political power for us, so we're going to do this one first. Uh, research facilities. And then we'll do that one because I want academic base next. Uh, establish close facilities. Might as well. Follow it up with. Consolidate new territories. It's almost impossible to explain how vast and sparsely populated Siberia is. I also have a few urban centers like Irkutsk and Novosibirsk. It's millions of square kilometers of wilderness and scattered villages. This is especially true of the newly integrated eastern provinces. Even the Tsars and Soviets can never fully extended their administrations over this region, and the eastern warlords never came close to matching what they did accomplish. The task of integrating this territory has been left to us. The urban centers of the east will form a nucleus of a new administrative web that will cover all of eastern Siberia. Every town and village, every isolated hamlet, all of them will be assigned to districts and administrative regions, each with having administrators and politicians appointed to oversee and represent them within our government. No more will the Far East be an isolated backwater forgotten by the Russian government. It's an integral part of the Russian nation, and it will be treated, of course, as such. Yes. Good, 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 good. And go in whenever we can. And to do this, we need to be 1971, which is fine. I mean, we're not even 1970 yet. we got about a week left. And how much political power are we getting every day? A little more than one, which is nice. But I do want to get more academic base right there. Oh, I could have done that one earlier. Um, So success is success, success. I guess we'll do this one next, which seems like a good idea. So consolidate new territories. And then after this one, we got some more research to do, which is awesome. Happy 1970, everybody. It's almost 1970. I might as well say that now from here on out. Um, yes, already, yes. Good. I love the RT. So after this one, we'll probably do a foundation for research for even more, more research facility growth. Are we at war now? Ah, Kazakh Soviet Socialist Republic. I do apologize if I'm just speaking very fast. I'm just, I'm a little excited for this. I want to see what the new content's like, so. And I'm sure you are as well. We need more manpower. Holy crap. 
There you go. Do the best you can. That's all I ask. Do the best you can. Wow, we are blitzing through their buttholes. Holy crap! Holy smoky fathers! I don't know how smoky fathers are, but root out the remnants. The Russian people are grateful to have a strong democratic government ruling over the Middle East, but there are still a few troublemakers who wish to overthrow us. These various extremists, whether they be fascists or communists or anarchists or monarchists, are all unified by the hatred for our government. These radicals held low enough profiles to be missed by the first round of crackdowns and arrests we made whenever we defeated their bosses, but now they've returned to make trouble and we must put a stop to it. There is no reason to assume that what worked before won't work again. A combination of surveillance, sabotage, arrest, and anti-radical propaganda will be enough to cripple the various terrorist organizations or societies that have cropped up against across Siberia and turn the public firm against their divisive message. As much as I want to do this one, I'm going to wait to core the territory here. Like, we have just blitzed through their buttholes. Like, Jesus Christ. We lost 11 guys versus 20,000. Oh, it's so beautiful. Just so good. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we're just going to go and just core all this stuff as fast as we can. We definitely need to. So, Wow, tank divisions. Oh, look at that. And we got 20,000 more manpower. Beautiful. Go ahead and train and get ready to take out... Well, I guess Omsk is one. Which is not good for us, but... Oh, well. What I would like to do with these guys is just blitz through the southern portion here. And just drive up from, like, here to there. Nice. And go ahead and integrate these guys. Ah, uh, doesn't matter. We're going to integrate them all eventually anyway, so... But, next up, we'll address the uranium problem, which would be a very good thing. Now we'll get 0.81, which is not great. But, honestly, army professionals should still improve. Um, industrial equipment, probably not. I mean, we're back to complexes. We're almost a modern industrial stuff, so that's great. Poverty did go up. We're 15 to 25 percent. We have modern agriculture, which is awesome. Research facilities are pretty good. We have modern research facilities. Nice. Hunters of men. The truck rolled down the dirt road through the forest, jostling the men inside. A few smoked in silence, filling the back of the truck with a smell of cigarettes. Some slept. Their snores inaudible over the rumbling engine. Fyodor was seated at the rear of the truck, staring out of the window, while next to him, Lev continued to jabber incessantly. Hey, Fyodor, how do you know when you've killed a communist? I don't know, Lev, how? Fyodor asked. When he started to bleed out, he called his own blood reactionary and tells it to read more theory. Lev laughed at his own joke, though Fyodor was unamused. Seeing this, Lev tried again. How do you know when you've killed a fascist? Fyodor glared at him. When he starts to bleed out, he calls you Jew dude and says his blood is too strong to leave his body. Once more, Lev cackled his own lack of wit. And once more, Fyodor remained silent. When Lev finished laughing, Fyodor spoke. Have you killed anyone, Lev? Lev looked at him confused, maybe. I fired my gun in combat a lot, but I'm not sure. Well, have you ever watched my anyone bleed out? No. Well, I have. I watched five men die. Communists, two anarchists, a fascist, and a Cossack. None of them talked about race or theory while they were dying. They all just cried for their mothers. And actually, I apologize. I have read that one before. I remember that one very vividly, actually, so... But it is what it is. My apologies. I can't remember sometimes if I read things, sometimes if I haven't, so it is what it is. You know what? Screw it. We'll get a new general here. Shoot and smash. So, uh, if you want to read about this, please go ahead. Nice. You are now part of the line. Do not disappoint us. Good. Since you're here too, anyways, just gonna go there too. Yeah, there nice. And election season. As it's no secret that the co-rulers of the nation do not get along, publicly, Pokrishkin and Shushkin present a united front, but it is well known that they have agreed on little for years. The two men have been able to set aside their differences and cooperate up until now, but with the recent acquisition of the Eastern Siberia and the prospect of national reunification growing greater by the day, their disagreements have become too great to ignore. The co-rulers have agreed that the only way to settle this is to let the Russian people decide. If you want to read about this last gasp, please go right ahead. Shushkin is campaigning on a platform of reform and democracy, pledging to create a truly equal and free Russian federation with a government elected by and subservient to the people before all else. Pokushkin has opted for a more conservative approach, stating his commitment to democracy but reiterating that Russia is in need of a strong government capable of uniting and defending its people. Only time will tell which message is more popular. Nice. <laughs> nice. Well, election season, my friends, and then we'll go with uh, this one, yeah. Expand Siberian mines, might as well, right? Partisan activity decreases. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. The campaign continues. Nice. A federal election. Um, since I've already read this one before, I'm pretty sure. Um, I can't remember if I read it or not, but please go right ahead if you like to read that. But we're going to go to Shushkin because we can. Oh, crap. We need political power, don't we? I can't remember this. Oh, look at, look at his face. Yeah. Sorry, Paul Krishkin. But I've already put the other dude on the thumbnail. Shushkin, a little bit, a little bit. Um, appeal to the common people by a moderate amount. Hold a speech in Bonn. I'll talk to sympathetic officers. I can't do that one.
He's making his moves. Um, yeah, maybe I should not have started coring stuff. Oh. Still six million people who need to be cored, so. Expand the mines. Ah, oh, we'll do this one. Why not? We get more stability. Oh, wow. That's a big jump. Not bad. Looking pretty good already. And then we'll do source 4 material. Which would be good. Also, we have this stuff, and Sabir's looking. Eh, they're feeling pretty good about us, so. Also, forgot about this, too. My bad. Look at all the th things we can build in. Oh, so good. Build, build, build. And then inf infrastructure, too. I like that we will get Central Asia once we uh, unify all the rest of Russia, so. Um, honestly, it's so good. We're going to win anyways, probably, but you never know, but still. I do want to do this one. If you want to read about this one, please go ahead. Time to find out where the military stands. Uh, spread the SID plan. For the war, Central Siberia was the site of one of the great, greatest planned industrial developments in history. The SIB plan transformed a backwater region into an industrial hub and a center of production. Uh, our newly acquired eastern territories were mostly untouched by the SIB plan, and their minuscule industry pales in comparison to that of our heartland. This east must be brought up to our standards. We shall develop the Far East the same way the Soviets developed in inland Siberia. A program of state plant industrial projects will serve as a foundation for new industrial production centers in the East. We'll go further than the Soviets, though. While the state plant was strictly managed by the state, ours will collaborate with our local cooperations or corporations, helping establish strong private industry in the Far East. Might as well, right? Might as well. Oh, hey, look at that. Better army professionals. Maybe you want to read about that, please. Go ahead. Excellent. Oh, we lose some political power. That's not excellent. That actually really sucks. But whatever. Eh, yeah, chasing the sun. Nice. Christian's making moves. I'm not really worried about that anymore. Uh, but in the Central Design Bureau, when Russia was factored into dozens of warlords, the armies and pilots of Nova Sibirsk had only one advantage over their foes. While they could not match the number of f or fanaticism of their opponents, they knew that they were always fighting with the best equipment Russia had to offer. This was solely because of the CDB and the fantastic innovative weaponry produced. The days of warlords are behind us, but the Bureau still proves its worth. Its staff of designers, engineers, scientists, and entrepreneurs all working around the clock to make sure that the next breakthrough that will change how wars are fought forever. We must increase our investment in the Bureau now that we have access to the more wealth and resources than ever before. If we could create groundbreaking new aircraft on a shoestring budget, imagine what they will be able to do with the resources of all Russia at their disposal. That should be pretty strong. Get some radar because you can. Get some better engineers too because that will be important. Actually, get some better guns first. Ah, uh, no, I lied. Denounce corruption. Chase the sun. Nice. National priority projects. It's clear everywhere we look at that Russia is rebuilding. Shops are opening, vacant buildings are being filled, and new ones are being built. Shelves are fully stocked for the first time ever, and the people are going back to work, but there's still much to do. We have come far, but there's still a long way to go before Russia is fully ready to retake its place in the modern global stage. It's our duty as the motherland's government to help her get there. To assist the recovery and rebuilding efforts, four programs have been selected for government funding and support, dubbed the National Priority Projects by the media. They focus on improving public health, access to education, housing availability and quality, and agricultural developments. By supporting improvements in these four vital areas, we're Pro pro uh, progressing towards the point where Russia is not just reunified, but rebuilt and prosperous at best. Or at least. Really, at least. Nice. We love the oil crisis. Uh, I think we'll do appeal to the con people again. I think that'll be good. Expand the uh, Volnkomats. Controlling Siberia and the people who live in it has always been a challenge for the past Russian governments, and no doubt be a challenge for us as well. This is made no easier by the fact that Eastern Siberia is now crawling with ex-military men who fought for the one leader or one another that now find themselves with nothing to do but grow bitter and resentful for our new rule. These men could be dangerous, but they also present an opportunity. Uh, the Volkomats, our system of military commissariats, have proven successful in maintaining our control of the nation and keeping extremist organizations on the run. Expanding the system to encompass a new territory, would help lock down the East. Recruiting dif disaffected army officers, black shirts, and NKVD agents into the Volkomat will give us a new way to put the skills of these unpleasant people to work for us while placing them directly, firmly, under our control. Nice. Our Eastern Bastion. 
The port city of Magadan used to be so insignificant, it didn't even appear on maps of Eastern Russia. During the decades of anarchy, it became important because it was Russia's largest unoccupied port, but even then, after years of improvements made by the various warlords who controlled it, it's still barely up to the task of serving as their primary port. Rebuilding Russia will require doing significant amounts of trading and business with the nations of the rule, and our ability to trade with them is limited by our port's capacity. Both business and government officials have been urging us to invest more into Magadan and to complete its transformation into Russia's new doorstep to the world. Asking they shall receive, Magadan will become worthy of the responsibility thrust upon it, and we shall finally have full and better access to the global marketplace. If you want to hear about this one in future in the comments story out, please go right ahead. A boy departs, will a man return? Maybe dead. Nice. A discipline force. Our military is one of the best in Russia. Our unification, reunification of Siberia is proof enough of that for anyone. But being the best in Russia does not mean we are ready to take on the world. For so far, our military has fought bandits and warlords and semi-industrialized rival regions, regional rivals. But we have yet to take on a full modern and war-ready military power considering the dangerous state of the world. We may have to sooner do that than we'd like. The technological gap between our forces and those of the Germans and Japanese is shrinking due to the heroic efforts of our design bureaus. But technology alone does not make a modern army. It does not matter how good the gun is if the man is too afraid to fire it. Our army is not a disorganized rabble, but its discipline still leaves room for improvements. We'll see that these improvements are made and in our manner refined into hardened warriors ready for the conflicts ahead. And if you want to report a profit, please go right ahead. Boom! Nice. Uh, there we go. Yeah, we got a lot of improvement upon here still, so. Oh boy, election results. I wonder what they're going to be like. But, towards a glorious future, to the Russian, to be Russian these days is to watch destiny unfold before your eyes. It is to see a nation rising from the ashes like a phoenix, born from the most unlikely of embers. No one could have guessed an ace pilot leading a ragtag band of military men and disaffected loyal politicians would establish the next government of Russia. Who would have guessed a warlord army operating out of Novosibirsk Nov would reunite the entirety of eastern Russia against all odds. Oh, look at this. Uh, mm. uh, Against all odds, the Federation has persisted, and now it stands strong with the final victory of drawing near. To be rushing these days is to stand at the middle point of a long, long road. Behind you, you are decades decade of suffering and violence that have been overcome. Ahead lies great uncertainty and the potential for conflict to pull, put all of our hardships of the past to shame. But there's also the potential for something brighter, something better. Russia has come so far so quickly. The only thing left to do is keep pushing forwards to whatever lies at the end of the road. But if you like to buy the writer's music, please go ahead. The people have spoken and they want to put Krishkin out. Democracy breeds. Cool. Siberian Federation, thank you very much. Uh, let's go to the next stage. I'm going to skip this one first just so we can keep working on this stuff too. So, oh. Oh, okay. That sucked. They had to redo that one. When's the change? The people have spoken and the will is clear after years of rule. Alexander Pokrushkin has finally tasted defeat of the ballot box, and Vasily Shushkin has been elected to lead the Federation towards to a new, brighter future. Shushkin and supporters have announced plans for a new, bold wave of liberalization and reforms that they say will finally bring freedom and democracy to all of Russia. While Shushkin's supporters are celebrating his victory, those who back Pokrushkin's continued rule are already voicing their concerns. The leaders of the military have expressed reservations about a weakening of the central government, and the boards of Russia's new mega corporations expect it will be much more difficult to deal with a government that is truly beholden to the interests of the people. I think we'll play all they like. They should be the first tyrants to fall before the might of a free Russia, but definitely not the last. If you want to read about Komastari training, please go right ahead. Integrate. Nice. I apologize for speaking so fast. I'm just excited for this, you know. Um, we need way more artillery. I'm not going to use transport helicopters for this campaign, so I don't want to see them. Good, good, good. And then, Demokratizatia? Shushkin's victory is a triumph for the cause of Russian freedom, but it's only the first step on the road towards democracy. But Kushkin and his toadies spent years building up their powers and doing their darns to turn Russia into a one-party state once more. Undoing their efforts will take time, and we must begin with a small performance to prepare the nation for the great changes it has in store. Soon the government will launch a new initiative called Demokratizatia. Democratization. Starting at the local level, the people of Russia will now be able to elect their leaders and representatives. Once a sufficient permanent election structure is in place, we'll be able to organize regularly scheduled elections at last. Other early reforms will include passing term limits uh, and preparing to implement a separation of powers amongst the various departments of the government. The winds have changed. Nice. And then we'll do this one next. And then curb the corporations. A new piece of legislation has been introduced recently that will put in place some token limitations on the activities of the corporations. The limits are trivial at best and mostly have to do with implementing the bare minimum of government oversight to stock trading, but the proposed law still has attracted significant attention from the people and the corporations for one reason. It used to be the case that legislation like this would be shot down immediately before ever going to a vote, but this is no longer the case. 
Brez and Shushkin will place his full support beyond this law and encourage his supporters to do the same on paper. It really is little more than a token of effort, but it will signal to the whole nation that Shushkin is no crony of the corporations. Or, yeah, corporations. We may not be able to end their influence right away, but we can make it clear to the world that the days of the Russian companies exploiting Russian people for foreign money will soon be over. Well, we'll see. And let's do this one. It's been a while since we've done this one, so. Well, it looks like we've quoted everything that we can. I didn't cut down military spending, so military. This is, we're spending a lot of money. I'll be honest, we're spending a lot of money here. <coughs> That's what I thought. In the office, if you like to read about that. I'm pretty sure I read this before, but if you want to read that, please go right ahead. It's good to be president. Nice. Dreams of a federation. Well, it was originally conceived, the Russian Federation was supposed to be Russia's best chance of democracy. The idealism of the Central Siberian Republic was always doomed to be a failure, but the Federation could, pro pro could provide a practical, a reasonable alternative that would reunite the Russian lands and peoples and secure a future defined by freedom and stability. What had morphed into under Pokrushkin's rule was a dutified authoritarian limitation or imitation of the original goal, but the damage could still be undone. Surely, slowly, the people of Russia are starting to wake up. They're realizing that this new president's promise are not false and his words are not empty. The Russian Federation can really be a nation of practical democracy rather than corrupt authoritarianism. After decades of bitter winners, the spring is coming to the motherland. The Almaty Airborne. Nice. So we gotta wait for this stuff anyway, so... Um... Monthly development's probably gonna do, so... Since we're gonna be here for a while, we are really gonna be here for a while. And industry's looking pretty good. Hey, we have a thousand manpower? Never mind. There you go. Oh, we can prepare for the unification war? Ah, uh, we can't do it peacefully, darn it. That sucks. Oh, they're still fighting Samar, though. Anybody read about, like to read about a Falcon and a Rider? Please go right ahead. The goal is to attack them before uh, they finish their war with each other, so. We've made a lot of it, quite a few divisions, actually, honestly. Uh, why do we have you guys here? Nice. Better engineers. This is for the future when we fight the Germans, so. Just gotta be ready for it. That's all. Nice. We got plenty of cast, apparently. And there goes Samara. Cool. What I would like to see is if we could fight them. Cold days? Eh, so be it. No one cares. Um, oh, I don't have it. God dang it. Fighters, yeah. There you go. Uh, is that they can't core their stuff fast enough so that we can just beat the crap out of them, maybe? I would love to see that. Develop mining techniques, might as well. Oh, maybe they already recorded. it. Darn, that sucks. Oh, they got plenty of manpower. Melinia. Not bad. Living budget boost, that's fine. Get more political power for now. We're going to need to core everything there, so. It's fine. Debt. That is but a number, right? Just like age. And they'll assemble some additional processing facilities. And I'll get that one too, so. Yeah, overall not too bad. Election season, I don't know why that's still there. Read by the motherland. Um, honestly, the Ionis is going to be pretty difficult to beat. Italy, I guess, is, is in its own faction, which means once we beat these guys... Oh, and French too, huh? We do get Romania, which would be pretty nice. Oh, offend. Actually, oh, I didn't show you. But John Glenn won, and they offend. Look at it. Glenn's later. Glenn's here. There will be blood. The Glenn Presidency. Please, Glenn, shoot for the shoot for the moon and then shoot for the Mars, please. For the Mars, Mars, please, 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 please. I'd love to see that, man. And do that, too. Nice. Keep building yourselves up, because this episode, we are building, 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 building. Omsk is not going to be the final enemy we fight, even though we have no manpower right now. Don't ask questions. Um, 28 divisions is not bad. Hopefully, they don't have an air force. I'm hoping that they don't have an air force. they got m tons of fuel like us. They have about a million. We have roughly a million, too. Oh, we actually got them decrypted. Oh, we need to keep doing this, too, though. Not bad. I'd love to become a spy master. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to get... Oh, yeah, we did get that one done. Definitely do Germany. We're not going to get any of these done now, but whatever. Oh, look at that manpower. Yay. We have a little bit of manpower, which is nice. You guys looking A-OK. -okay. Uh, these motorized are not bad. They're only 20 combo with, but still. We can make them bigger, though. Bigger, better, stronger. 
Because if you're not using 40 combo by the time you get to this stage, you're like, you might as well not even try. Because the AI definitely is using 40 combo as well. Change this to, uh, motorized. There you go. It's going to cost more tanks, but whatever. Giving them armor is super helpful sometimes. The primary schooling. This is de definitely got to go up, right? Oh, we'll have to get more research speed, factory output, and cap. I want to get there, so it's nice. Strike. Yeah, go and strike it. I don't want to wait. Our Air Force should be good enough. Should be. Should be. Should be. Unification of Russia. Preparedness 80%. We'll get this one done hopefully first. Oh, never mind. That's a lot of days. Nice. Actually. Shah of Iran has been assassinated. Go here. Oh, yes. Bitter plants from bitter seeds. I don't think they have enough divisions to hold the entire line. Because we've got all... we got over 60... we got 63 divisions here. Oh, and Bormund's throne shall grow larger. Well, we'll see what about that. It lasts forever. Whatever. They don't care. Then again, we can't cover the entire front line, too, apparently. My bad. Well, you guys moving forward, though. Oh. What's happening? Oh, there goes Iran. Okay, no one cares. Um, thanks, yeah. The Iranian Civil War. Can we say any volunteers if we're not at war? I don't think we can. It'd be kind of cool if we could, though, but we can't. There we go. Omsk has got to die. Oh, God, they're going to be tough. Oh, we can't pierce them, either. Oh, wow. Over here, we're doing quite well. Air superiority over here, too, maybe. They do have a couple planes. It looks like some really early fighters. Wow. I mean, our fighters are not perfect and great, but like... Wow, that sucks for those guys. Nice. Go ahead and start improving our tanks, because these guys are just not as good as I'd like them to be. We cut them off from the capital. That would be. Oh, I guess we took the capital. Okay. Oh, these guys will all die then. That's good. That's really good. Nice. Losses. Wow, seventy-six thousand. That's insane to think about already. But once we core these guys, like this, will give us a lot more manpower. Once these guys are gone, it's going to be not over, but like, it's going to be a lot better for us. 100,000. Yeah, I mean, Omsk is not easy. We've almost got half a million of them, though. So that's great. I can't imagine them recovering from that too much, but then again... Eh, they have about 100,000 left. That's not bad. So 20, they still have 20 divisions after they deleted all those other guys. Not bad. Fighting Omsk, man. Not even once. Come on. I clicked on it. I clicked on it. There you go. Now it's better. How did you not win? Hold on. What the hell is wrong with you? There you go, you ding-dongs. Okay, so how do we take this many casualties? Honestly, I don't care. Just keep going. There's no way that they, these guys can keep it up. There's literally no way. I mean, it's really painful for us, too, but still. Nice. Alright, if you want to fail that hard, then we're going to stop attacking for now, because we need more manpower. But, I don't know how they cord these other areas so fast. Kind of a big stream. We've lost quarter million, we've lost half a million. Give, give our guys some time to plan. And get way more artillery and tanks and guns back. There. Don't make any more for now. That definitely helped us out there. Artillery. We need way more. You got one too many, huh? Cool. 
You general. Here we go. Alright, good. Make your tanks a little stronger. Even stronger after that, too. Three. Two. One. Oh god, you guys are looking so weak now. Yeah, they've got to be done. Um, I'm sorry, but oh, I hate Omsk. They have to, how do they how do they have this much manpower? Where do they get that manpower from? That literally makes no sense. How? They should have no equipment left, no manpower left, nothing. After all the damage we've caused them, man, Omsk cheating. They be they be a bunch of cheetahs. Like, you get it, this is not very efficient, but at the same time, I don't care. How did they not lose? How did they not lose there? Jesus Christ, yeah. Nova Sabirsk is not easy fighting Omsk. Seven hundred thousand dead, and it's still not enough. Like, this is this is an extreme grind fest. Uh, no, that's the next development stage. Oh, yay! They're killing each other. Um, just go Nincy. That might that will definitely not be enough to capitulate them, but still. get nukes one way or another. If it kills half a million of us to kill off a million of them, so be it. They chose this fate, so. My god. Yeah, I don't know how they court it this fast. I mean, yeah, we can court stuff quickly, but, like, still. We're good to the core makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Can't really complain about that one. But I can find a way to complain about it no matter what. Is this what they wanted? 900,000 dead? Nice, that's good. That's better. Bad idea to get rid of it now, but whatever. Actually, we got plenty of tanks. Oh, look at that. Nice. You should easily be able to beat these guys up. Easy, easy, easy street. Half a million dead from us. A million dead from Omsk. Ridiculous. But it is Omsk, and they're always difficult to beat. Go, go, go. Well, this is good for army XP. Can't wait to get some more manpower back, though. Ukta. There you go, nice. Come on, let's get... Oh, we hit a million. They really don't like Russians, those people in Omsk. Can take Arkhangelsk? Yes. We got. That should have gotten him, right? That should get him, right? There we go. Well, we did it. I'm sorry for all the casualties we've caused. Like, oh my god. And now, let's go and uh, see anything else here before we do all this stuff. Cool. Burn all of our PP, and then do that and this. United and free.
dreams of a federation, my friends, but it's not over yet. We have a whole three switch slot, and my god, we cut off way too much of our own manpower, but it is what it is, and we'll do okay. So now, let's keep making a lot more of this, which would be good for the GDP, even though it won't really matter realistically in the end. Cool. And ding dong 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 ding dong ding. Cool. Well, a lot less than I thought there would be for us to build, but whatever. Build more roads, because that'll be just good to get more supplies through here anyways. Obviously, our army's just not big enough. I mean, getting half a million manpower is really nice. How fast can we course up, actually? That's my question. Make sure to just build everything up here. I have enough resources. Super, super important. Uh, yeah, not bad. That's pretty good. Invade Finland. Those guys won't be bad. Actually, how long does this take? Ah, three weeks. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. A visit to Abba. Um, well, if you wonder about that, please go ahead. The focus tree will now change. And now, this should begin the new content for us. Uh, for this campaign. Now let's get some flamethrowers next. And, oh, look at this. Ooh, the Federation of Hope. After decades of chaos and despair, Hope has finally emerged as the Federation's finally united Russia. From an oligarchical warlord state in the middle of the central Siberia to become a rapidly liberalizing de democratic federation under the careful guidance of the Federation's second president, Vasily Shushkin. Although we stand united, there's much work that still needs to be done for both the nation and the people before we can begin to look beyond the borders of our native borders towards the west. Back to Moscow. In which up next we'll do National Reformation. Before we can begin the liberation of the rest of our motherland, there were several promises made by the president during his campaign. Promises that must be kept. While reforms have been made, it has become clear that the more decision act decisive action is needed to fully transform the Federation into a democratized state. In order to fulfill his promises, the president has begun a process he has named the National Reformation, a series of political, social, and economic reforms designed to transform the Federation and lead the Russian people towards the promised Russian dream. A new Federation, Vasily Shushkin sat at his desk. Novosibirsk was much colder than Bob. Now it was larger, louder, and much busier too. It seemed to correspond with his current position as a president of the Federation. He had the syllabics in his left ear, and the corporations in his right. All day, 24-7, Vasily didn't like the job. As a matter of fact, he despised it. At times, he wished for that he was back in Bonnau, challenging Pokrishkin, and backing minor reforms to Shushkin that was much easier to deal with than his current situation. Despite his recent efforts, there was so much to do. Heck, there was an entire system that needed to be overhauled and reformed if the Federation was to ever truly become a free and democratic nation. The Silovics were putting up stiff resistance at every turn, of course, doing everything possible to halt the reforms and to overrule the newly founded Federal Assembly. For decades, since breaking away from the failed Central Siberian Republic, the Silovics and the Pokrishkin had been in power. They made the Federation what it was, a land where the strongmen had the complete rule of the people, pocketing the cash and ignoring the damage they'd done. This Federation would be different, however. It would be like the misplaced idealism of the failed CSR, and it wouldn't be like Pokrishkin's cynical federation. It would be a different kind of federation to a bright and hopeful future of the all-Russian army. When a vast motherland finally became one after decades of division and destruction, few were to forget the valiant efforts made by the federation's joy and pride. The all-Siberian army, now that the nation is united, the time has come to reform the newly named all-Russian army and prepare to lead the Russian federation for the coming conflict against Germany and the puppets of the Reich. And we just lost all of our manpower, and we got some more stuff court, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Make sure we got enough guns, make sure we got enough anti-tank, make sure we got, oh god, a whole lot more artillery, and planes are looking a-okay-ish, as we're taking out Central Asia, which is awesome, because we love taking out Central Asia. You, me, and Central Asia, what's not to love? Also, I'll be honest here, I actually recorded this earlier, but apparently OBS crashed, so I kind of am already doing this a second time, but hey, doesn't matter. This is still a pretty gosh darn good mod. And, uh, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm excited for what we can do here. Because, actually, we have this thing here, the Federal Assembly, so we have 32 council seats. These guys have 18. We have 53 Duma seats, well, they have 47, so we have a little bit of leeway, but, and support is not great from the people, so, the President's speech. President Shushkin stood before a vast crowd of supporters, who had gathered as far as Ak Angles to see Freedom's champion speak, Shushkin. <clears throat> Smiles he approached the microphone, the eyes were rolled now upon him, Russia's won, the president complorial claimed immediately. The crowd erupted in cheers and celebration. It was almost hard to believe it. Our people once so submissive had broken in in an age of warlordism. Now proud and hopeful of the days ahead, soon the crowd fell back into silence as the president spoke again. But not all Russians are with us this day. Millions of our people beyond our borders still live under occupation, their rights as human beings stripped from them. Reduced to second-class citizens in their own land, do those people unfortunate enough to live under such conditions hear me when I say this? 
Shushkin paused for a moment, a smile emerging on his face as he was gazed upon the crowds of thousands before and watching him in silence as was the rest of the world. Your liberation is coming! The crowd cheered wildly as Shushkin looked forward towards the skies, basking in the sunlight and the cool air. He felt it. The winds had changed in the afternoon breeze. Things were different now, and the world knew it. For the liberation of all the Russians. And we're going to expand the Central Design Bureau to get another research slot. Look at that. And our nuclear stock will rapidly improve, even though we'll lose a couple seats. One major lesson we can take from the Great Patriotic War is that Russia was technologically behind, and did that make the advancements required to beat them back to the borders. This fear to, mo to modernize costs the former USSR everything. The Federation must be the instrument of change in Russia. We need to modernize society, and our forces to reach the technological superiority the superpowers enjoy. By expanding funding to the Central Design Bureau, we can overcome our shortcomings and finally achieve modernity. But, <clears throat> reforming the all-Russian army. And actually, since we're here anyways... Uh, so let me y'all just go that way, please. Thank you. Come again. Despite the numerous victories of the Federation over the various warlords in its quest to reunify the motherland, a mere army of a warlord will forever pay on comparison to the might of a superpower. Many who then high command naively believe that the all-Russian army in its current state can easily repel the Teutons. From the West, Shushkin does not share the sentiment, however. He does see an army not quite up to the standards of most modern militaries. The Navy is incapable of defending the Bering Sea from the Kriegsmarine, and most importantly, the Russian Air Force is completely outmatched by the Luftwaffe on both quality and, of course, quantity. <clears throat> to match up to the Germans in the upcoming unification wars. The only solution is the rapid modernization and reformation of our Federation's armed forces. There's still much to do to achieve <sighs> perfection. As we're coring more stuff, of course. Um, let's go ahead and do constitutional reforms. Why not? While the president's early reforms, though, if you worry about the success, please go right ahead. But while the president's early reforms have strengthened our efforts of liberalizing the federation, we, if we can't replace the Soviet constitution that has reigned over the federation since its inception, our efforts could be easily undone with nothing more than a signature of a future president. That's a dangerous issue the federation can't risk, of course. No president, reformist or not, should have permitted or be permitted to have this much executive power over the government and people. President Shushkin, after some convincing, understands the issue with this fact is promised to allow the process of creating a new constitu uh, constitution a new constitution, to move forward without any interference from him or his administration. Also, uh, I didn't... Oh, we can't invade Finland. Oh, we're done here. Nice. You know what? Let's go insane with the Finns. Call up every single division here. And we're going to smash the crap out of the fins like there's no tomorrow. I want them all gone. So, yeah. We'll definitely go over the war things. Also, I didn't show you this, but we can go to here. Click for interactions. And we can get some more stuff for the State Duma. Uh, majority and Federal Council. Get more presidential support, which we'll need. Um, oh, wait. If you spend 100, you get... Oh. Basically double. Huh. By one and two, huh? The ultimate deterrence. Shushkin's eyes scan the vast step from within the comfort of the president's car. Looking upon the vast plains of the motherland with wonder. Soon, Shushkin had arrived at his destination. A top secret facility just north of Tom's exiting the car. <clears throat> the president was approached by two men, one cloaked in a lab coat and the other fully dressed in a military uniform. Uh, president Shushkin, we've glad you arrived. Please follow us. <clears throat> the facility followed the men to the facility, guarded by two all-Russian army soldiers. The trio went down an elevator and entered a silo with a nuclear, large nuclear weapon in the center. The key to Russia becoming a giant once more, although the president had been informed on the progress of the Russian nuclear program. To see the weapon himself gave him equal measures of both awe and, of course, <clears throat> horror. The officer began to speak. This is, as you know, is millennia. This, along with along with the many other weapons being constructed, will help close the distance between the Federation and the superpowers. The rider slowly approached the missile, placing a hand on the side of the weapon, a slight smile forming on his face as he looked upon the strength of the Federation, sword of the motherland. Since we're here, we're going to need more state Duma seats, so... Oh, we don't have enough political power. Well, we got to wait. So we need more state Duma seats, so we're going to wait to get political power first. Before we record anything else, which sucks, but whatever. It is what it is. Very, very good. Uh, but after the one, oh, to the people. Despite all that the Shushkin administration has accomplished for the people of the Russian Federation, we would be fools to believe that any of this would have been possible without the will, strength, and dedication of the Russian people. It was to the people of this nation that we were propelled to where we are today, and we owe it all to them to fight for their basic civil liberties and to pursue the ever promised Russian dream. Wow, 11 fat more divisions? Love it. Are we all here? Oh, we're good to go. We're going in. So before we, so 18, we have 89 divisions, nice. They've already lost 4,000 people. It's not enough, obviously, but still. Ah, oh, good. Because I'm playing through soon, too, as well. That'd be awesome, awesome, awesome. Any more divisions? Yo, yes, please. 
No wonder we have no manpower. A long night, ignoring the incessant noise of the ringing telephone that was most definitely Pokdushkin wanting to give him a piece of his mind. Shushkin was half asleep as he read one of the last few untouched papers on his messy desk regarding his latest act which was about constitutional reform. The president hastily flipped through the lengthy document, scribbling his signature rather untidily at the bottom. He had received a tsunami. A request after announcing that he would do his best to assist minor political uh, parties in whatever way possible and had taken in an all-nighter to get through the papers. As he started trying to tidy his desk to start getting things done more effectively, he heard the knock, uh, the door click and turned around to watch his secretary walk into his office wordlessly and dump a fresh stack of papers in a relatively untouched area. On the cluttered mess of the workplace, Shushkin operated. The secretary stared at the half-dead president and offered him a pitiful look before leaving. Shushkin groaned inwardly, reaching over to his emptied coffee mug and shakily getting up to refill it. Filling with a knob on the coffee machine, he pondered taking a nap and catching up on some sleep, or desperately needed to sleep. Just as he was about to head to his room, the writer froze as the thought of the Siloviki regaining control over the Federation, subtly entering his mind, the people's rights being stepped on torn apart once again, has got somersaulted, and he made his decision, shuffling back to the desk, fueled by caffeine and something else in his soul. Sleep could wake in economic liberation. For decades, the Siloviki has allowed corporations, primarily Sibir, Phoenix, and Titan, to dictate the economy of the Federation while, far while family farmers and small businesses have been largely been left behind. Despite the token reform Shushkin made within his first few weeks in office, it is clear to all that if the Shushkin administration wishes to break the corporate hold of the flow of money, we must take more decisive action in order to achieve economic liberation. Uh, since we're here anyways, at 72, grab some better arty. We're literally in the field now. It's fine. Doesn't matter. And Okay, here. And let's do this. As much as I want to core more stuff, um, we need it. Yeah, we're going to need more in the State Duma. The Federation Council is fine. State Duma, though, you betcha. Because we need enough State Duma support to actually pass this and do focuses, so. It is what it is. Idolism. Nico leaned on his desk. Uh, let's focus solely on the radios. Oh, if you want to be about better research facilities, please go ahead. Slowly on the radio, he had inherited from his late father. His father had been a Red Army soldier who had served under Voroshilov during the West Russian War, a full fledged communist who had perished during the West Russian Unification Wars. Nico, on the other hand, had grown to idolize Vasily Shushkin, the president of the Russian Federation. Since the fall of Rock Ongusk, uh, Nico had been supporting the man who had fought for the liberty of all Russians from the forces of tyranny, battling the Siloviki in the halls of the Federal Assembly, and challenging the Germans of the West. He would never forget the speech that the president had made following the proclamation of the Russian Federation. Russia is one were the words the young boy would never, ever forget. Soon the song played on his father's old radio faded away and the announcer began to speak. We hope you've enjoyed another brilliant song from Russia's rising star, Eduard Artemyev. Now from his home in Novosibirsk, President Shushkin will be giving a speech in regards to propose bill that will reform the rights of the Federation's workers for the better, the voice of the radio Art Angos announced. Nico leaned in closer with a smile on his face as the voice of the President flickered through the speakers, Russia's best hope speaks. Your voice matters, a toast to our farmers. The Working Man Act. After this one, support small businesses. It's been a long time since the era of small business in Russia, although they exist in the Federation. They're overshadowed by the large corporations and are struggling to compete in an economy that heavily favors the corporations in order to put the corporations in their place and pave the way for prosperity. We must support the growth of new small businesses across the Federation, especially in the newly integrated West and the Podium scheme. Many struggling small businesses will be eligible for subsidies. We will show the business owners of the Federation that the government is on their side going forward. Uh, I don't want to cut, so... Oh, and th this thing up here tells you you, can, you have political power to spend over here, so... Not bad. How are we doing in Finland? We've lost 700 versus 35,000, which is not good enough yet, but whatever. Yeah, the tanks were really beaten up last time. Nice. The Environment Protection Act. Gain some seats. Your vote matters. During the rule of the Soviet Siloviki, the right to vote was restricted with the most privileged and elite of the Federation having the most powerful vote. The only reason Shushkin got where he is today is due to the support of the Siberia Corporation and a few in government that were in favor of reform, despite the minor reforms made by the former President Pokushkin in the voting rights. The criteria that most Russians must meet just to vote for local office is near possible. We should make efforts to transform voting rights in the Russian Federation, removing the barriers to ensure that all Russians are fairly represented in the government. A dream within reach. Boris stared at the building he just bought after years of saving up his money working in the factories. At last, he was a business owner, a self-made man. Once upon a time, Boris had believed that this would have been impossible. For years, corporations and warlords have been controlling almost everything. Every factory and all stores belong to the state, with the silly president, Vasily Shushkin, however. Things had changed, of course, for the better. Men like him could finally make something of themselves. He won't be forced to work long hours at a factory to get by, receiving mere scraps for his hard labor. He can lead his own life now, accomplish his dreams, and live decently for once. 
One day, this building was become a barbershop, a vibrant place where the community can meet, exchange stories, and feel comfortable once more. He could finally achieve his dreams of being a barber. Some of his friends at his old job had made fun of his aspirations, but that, of course, mattered very little. Things were changing in Russia, and this time it won't be the only the Novosibirsk's big three that succeed, but all of Russia. Dreams so distant, once so distant, are finally in reach. Um, let's go in core. Vorkuta. Yeah. Maybe Orsk next. A toast to the farmers. Vasily Shushkin has not forgotten his rural upbringings, nor has he forgotten the hardships farmers faced in the early days when they were forced to supply the factory city of Novosibirsk. The president often remembers the numerous letters farmers had sent him. Letters of the suffering and pleas for him to help them stand up against such a tyrannical government at that time demanded that impossible. With the Silovics no longer the head of the government, the president is now free to assist the farmers of Russia. Whether that be through lowering the insane quotas placed upon them and subsidizing their modernization efforts, the farmers are an integral part of the federation, and we must ensure the nation recognizes this simple fact. Manufacturer's consent. Nikolai Orlov jaunted the work as he bit into the perfect egg sandwich. Two slices of fresh tomatoes from his wife's garden, two hunks of toasted and buttered bread, and a single egg fried in butter, salted, peppered, and dusted gently with garlic powder. It was heavenly, the kind of sandwich he which he never could have made in the anarchy. Shushkin and the Federation had done good by him. As Nikolai walked down the beaten country path, the portable radio carrier began to mutter. Brothers and sisters of Western Siberia, the advertisement began. When you march to the polls this election day, vote for prosperity and patriotism. Vote for the pro-business policies that we need to rebuild our home. Vote Alexei Novak. Off. Nikolai smiled at his sandwich and continued on his way to work. By the time Nikolai arrived at the front gates of the Titan Laboratory Equipment Incorporated, his fingers were coated in tomato juice and egg yolk with, se with seven minutes before shift started. He tiptoed to the men's bathroom, stopping on the way to offer a quick uh, good morning to his friend Nina. God, guy of a kind, as Nikolai scrubbed his callous hands in a stream of cool water, dozens of posters emblazoned with a flag of the Federation loomed behind him. A vote for Novikov is a vote for Moscow. One shot of prosperity and freedom. Patriotism and liberty. Vote Novikov, its brother's scream. As he stepped onto the work floor, dozens of machines rolled before him, cutting glass, shaping plastic, and injecting malformed product. He smiled. Looks like the night shift hadn't broken anything too important for once. Nikolai strode to his workstation, affixed his safety goggles, and began his work day. Five minutes had passed before Mr. Volnigradov, his superior... Or supervisor passed by his workstation. Nikolai, I hope you're doing well. How's the old girl doing? She said. Or he said. Nikolai shot a smile at his manager. Stronger than a mule's kick, sir. I think we'll make quota today, he said. Vinogradov nodded. Good. I'll, I'll note that down. By the way, corporate asked me. To pass on that election day will be a company holiday. Who are you going to vote for? Nikolai scratched his chin and thought for a moment, but then found his answer. I think I'll vote for Novikov, sir. Are they allowed to ask who you're going to vote for? I'm not sure they're allowed to ask that, but whatever. Um, Get more seats. Limit corporate influence. Not bad. Yeah, we're going to lose a lot of support, though, which is not great, but the Working Man Act, which is going to hurt us because we're going to lose uh, max factories in the state, but we do get some more social poli social stuff, which is good still, but another role of the Solovikovs, or Soloviks. The rest of basic workers were ignored on a daily basis. To Pokrishkin and his clique, the only thing that mattered was monetary gain, even if that meant trampling over the people they ruled. In the early 60s, this disregard was enough to push them over to a more radical sector of society, such as a radical Narodniki, Narodniki leading to a workers' uprising that almost broke the Federation. Even today, the workers are still second to the dollar. All that ends with the passing of this bill. Soon enough, the hard-working people of the Federation will be given the workplace protections they do deserve. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, thank you. And more factories? Very nice. So what are we missing? Uh, we actually have plenty of artillery. Look at that. We actually have plenty. We have more than enough stuff already? I don't believe you. I'll get more tanks just in case. And when we're done, get, get a lot more fighters. Yeah, we're going to get a lot of fighters. But a toast to our farmers. And since we're here anyways. So 51, we barely have enough state, uh, state Duma seats. So, State Duma. We'll do it one more time. Just so we get, we have a little bit more protection there. The Rookie Man Act. We'll lose four seats in the State Duma and two in the Federal Council, so we got to keep an eye on that. But since we're here, we're going to go ahead and do it as a toast. Because we can. And so we're going to lose a lot of support. The previous president. I do want to do that one, though. Uh, <clears throat> Vasily Shushkin, friend of the farmers, ally of the workers, champion of the people. In these few short weeks, the president and the reformists have proven through our recent social reform that the president is indeed a man of the people. The people's president. The people of Russia can count on the president and the reformers to do what is right. Together, the Federation marches forth, moving ever closer to achieving the promised Russian dream. Man, we get, like, no political power, which sucks. This sucks so much. How's this looking? Yeah, it's looking not too bad. Oh, boy. The Working Man Act changes for the better. What on earth is this meeting about, Natasha? Vadim asked he sat down next to his co-worker. I'm not really sure. Heard rumors about some changes. To the factory, but no one's sure, Natasha replied, stealing a glance before looking back towards the front. I guess we're about to find out, Vadim stated as her boss, Roman, walked on the stage with a document in his hand. 
The workers watched as Roman examined the document for a moment before turning his attention to his employees. Hello all, I'm sure you're wondering why I brought you here today. So I won't beat around the bush. The Federal Assembly has just passed new reforms in regards to the workers, the rights of workers in the Federation, he explained. <clears throat> uh, yeah, gesturing to the workers in front of him before continuing. In accordance with these new laws, you will notice some changes around the factory starting tomorrow. One immediate change I think you will like is increase in wages. Roman exclaimed, earning the cheers of several workers in the room. Ruan smiled as he looked back at the document. And here I thought we'd be getting our pay doctor something, Vadim remarked. Natasha smiled as Roman went on to explain the new rules and changes that would occur in the factory. It was better than we could have possibly imagined. Huzzah! The people's president, though. Nice. And I get a lot more political power, which we desperately need right now. Maybe not desperately, but a lot. Um, Because right now... Yeah, that's not good. This is even worse. State Duma seats. So we'll be literally in the middle again, which kind of sucks, I'll be honest. So, let's come over here. The uh, Falcon's advice. Vladivostok. Getting over here would be really good for to help army professionalism, but the failings of Bukharin. What would have been otherwise would have been an effective economic plan that would have seen the former Soviet Union rise from the ashes of the civil war and ensure prosperity among the Soviet people. It was ultimately botched by the leader of the USSR, Niki Nikolai Bukharin. Although his failures as a leader saw the breakdown of the Soviet economy and the loss of our nation's western holdings, there is still much to learn from the former Russian leader. After all, failure can be one of life's greatest teachers. Ah, mechanical ballistic computers. Yummy. And we're just trying to make sure our tanks are just like, just perfect. Just perfection. Um, I do want to core one more thing here first. Uh, how much manpower does this place have? Not that much. If anything, I do want to core mag. You guys don't have a lot of population here. Yeah, not nearly as much. Um, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan. You still should have millions of people here. Yeah, yeah oh yeah. Tashkent, the Tashkent one's really good core. Bukhara? Yeah, we want to do this one. Tashkent. Uzbekistan, oh, that'd be very good core. Oh my goodness. Well, let's come over here. And the People's President. They tolerate us for now, which is fine, but we need more State Duma seats. Yes. Homecoming. Since becoming president of the Federation, Vasily had been either stuck in Novosibirsk or traveling the nation from Magadan to Ninsi Novgorod, meaning he couldn't visit Barno as much as he would have liked. His time away from his native city made his return to it all the better. He was filled with a sense of nostalgia as his car drove through the streets of Barno, reminding him of his time as the mayor of Barno, where he had led his campaign against the ruling Siloviki. <clears throat> now, here, he stood triumphant. He had returned as the president. Despite the time away from the city, the reception he had received from Barno's native certainly did not change as thousands of people lined the sidewalks to greet their beloved president. Shushkin waved to them all as he passed with a smile on his face. So many across Russia put their faith into him by doing the right thing. To do the right thing. By them. To deliver on his promises of freedom and democracy for all Russians. He and he aimed to deliver on that promise. <clears throat> soon enough, Vasily found himself whisked away from his thoughts and was soon enough on a stage before a large crowd of thousands who had come to see the president after his time away from Barnall. Shushkin smiled as he cleared his throat and looked to the people as he'd come to love over these long years. Good people, Barnall, it's good to be home. Individual. Ooh, the industrial renaissance. We get more GDP growth? Ooh. That looks really quite good. The reunification of Russia under the rule of the Federation has brought forth hundreds of international investors. Now, new businesses are opening every day with thousands of new jobs daily. Business confidence in Russia has never been so, so high. The Russian economy, or economy is back on the global stage, rising higher than ever, and we must take the necessary steps to ensure that our eco economic and industrial foundations can maintain our economic momentum to the top of the global market. Absolutely. Russia must be on top of the world. Spend and um, you know we can cut for a little bit, but I don't really want to. So we're not we're going to leave it as is for now. An old remnant, Joseph, and the two other men accompanying them, <clears throat> approached the tiny cabin, trying to slow down his breathing, taking careful steps from uh, closer to the hut. They eventually got to the door of the cabin. From a distance away, it could have been dismissed as an old house, a relic of a past abandoned decades ago. But they knew the cabin held something else. Joseph signaled to his men: three, two, one, go. The first knocked down the door, the old door, with a firm kick, and Joseph burst into the cabin. Put your hands up! Under the orders of President Shushkin, you are under the voices man trailed off as his eyes focused on an old man in on a rickety chair. The show of the man that was once Nikolai Bukharin had been admiring. An old frame photograph when he heard the noise and slowly turned around to face his would-be captors. Those sad, worn eyes weren't those same ones burning with the ideological fire Joseph had served under so long ago. Bukharin slowly got to his feet, prepared to face judgment for the rest for the role he had played in destroying Russia, although Joseph had 
had thought. He prepared himself mentally. He couldn't stop the emotion from flowing on his face as he stared at the former Soviet leader. He had once loyally served. He would never forget how he had wasted his youth fighting for a cause that was never meant to be. He felt his pistol slip out of his hand and land on the floor with a soft thump. His fingers suddenly numb. Joseph held back tears as he stared at the man who had failed Russia in the eyes, choking out Nikolai Bukharin. You are under arrest. The two others stood obediently by his side with the guns at the ready, clearly expecting the former premier of the Soviet Union to put up a fight to go out with one final bang. He did not, though. Bukharin picked up his framed photo and stared at it one last time, wiping away the dust that had gathered over his former friends' and enemies' faces. Before setting it down on the table, he shuffled over to the men, a resigned look in his sad eyes. This was his fate. All of his ruin was his fault. All of this room ruin was his fault. <clears throat> there was no one else to blame but him. He deserved whatever it was to come. Joseph escorted his former leader to the truck outside, sitting down on the passenger seat. As he made the call to inform his superiors of the catch, he heard the only two words from Nikolai Bukharin, the ones who had doomed Russia all those years ago. I'm sorry. Nice. Good. Rebuild. Oh my gosh! Rebuild the Volga Basin factories. Holy crap! That's really strong. One, six, twelve, twelve more uh, cities. Whoa! The Volga River Basin was once an industrial heartland of Russia from the days of the Tsar to the final years of the USSR. The region had always been home to some of Russia's largest, most productive factories. While the area is divided between Muscovy and the Federation, the industrial foundations are still present, waiting for the necessary funding and attention required to rebuild the region and make it the beating heart of Russia once more. The Premier and the President! The only door to Shushkin's office open, and his bodyguards escorted the man who had wanted to find he had wanted to find for so long into the seat adjacent to him. The president turned around, facing the former premier of the USSR, Nikolai Bukharin. The man facing him had changed. The once hopeful face of what was supposed to be an exemplary revolutionary plaster on posters throughout the former Soviet Union was now a depressed and ragged old man. Shushkin sighed. As the former premier met his eyes for a second, before looking back down at his soul, rummaging for the piece of paper detailing Bukharin's arrest in his drawer, he cleared his throat. Bukharin, I'm not here to. I won't object to your man shooting me. Bukharin smumbled under his breath. The president paused, uh, taking it back before continuing. I didn't bring you here to shoot you, Bukharin. You see, although almost virtually everyone living in Russia hates you, Bukharin, let his pain sound of sadness, we all know you never meant to cause a collapse to the Soviet Union, and you were only doing what you believed in. In my opinion, shooting you would be greater than fear, however. Shushkin paused, weighing the options in his head. And President Bukharin would help with public support, but it was... What was it fair to make the old man rot in his cell for the rest of his days? Free and we are a just society. Ooh. Was it fair to make the old man rot in his cell for the rest of his days? Well, I do like public support. Imprison him for his failures. Live as a free man. Nikolai Bukharin. Some will say yes, some will say no. Um, We could use more popular support, honestly. Actually, that's not too bad. You know, let's go all the way. Imprison him? But we're just a society, right? We're... R.A.P.P. with liberal conservatism, even though this guy's a conservative Democrat. Huh. Oh, I don't know. Mm. Is it fair for the old man? Ah, who cares? Bukharin in prison. Shocking news has emerged from the newly united Russian Federation as a former premier of the USSR, Nuk Nikolai Bukharin. The man who famously led the USSR to the jaws of the Nazi war machine was found and arrested by the members of the Sluzba Besopasnosti. Once said to have died following the fall of Moscow, the news of his capture and imprisonment were welcomed by most Russians living within the Federation. The populace happy that the man who had doomed them decades ago was finally getting the punishment he deserved. The Silovics have applauded the president's actions. President Vasily Shushkin, however, was unavailable for comment. A new era for Russia. Yeah, I'll we'll do this one next. A couple comments that I completely forgot to get go to earlier. Uh, if we wanted to, we could have edited the game files for the U.S. Japanese influence game from the last episode. Yeah, I suppose to. I could we we could have, but I just I didn't have time for that. So yeah, maybe next time. Uh, so it says we should try out Fascist Magadon, or Fascist Samara with Okton. Yeah, maybe eventually. I think that'd be a lot of fun. That'd be actually a lot of fun. So, we'll get there eventually, but... We'll see. We'll get there when we get there. Actually, these tank divisions... Oh, yeah, you, We don't have engineers on these guys yet? What's wrong with me, man? What is absolutely wrong with me? Yeah, we need a lot more tank divisions. Um, these guys are not bad either. Make sure you get logistics to save on fuel. And do we have any empty... I don't think I'm, we're making any anti-air. Support anti-tank, maintenance. That's fine. Make one, because these are pretty easy to make. Dangago. Do you want me to do what? 
Alexei Novikov tapped his fingers on an oak of his new desk like a madman. The plastic of the phone receiver held to his ear was as cold as the midnight frost, and his spine acted like he'd been struck in the back. You've heard me the first time, Anatoly Yohontov said. President Shushkin isn't responding to your interest. You're going to cross the aisle. No, no, I can't do that. I won't do that, Alexei said. I started this campaign to help Zotaus, I to help my family. But Kirshkin's party's in bed with the Phoenix. They'll tear my arm to shreds. They're also in bed with us, my friend. Well, I don't work for Titan. Actually, you do, Yohontov said. We handed you the election on a silver platter. We paid for your staff. We own the deed to your apartment in Nova Sibiris. Hold on one second. In the background, Alexei heard Yohontov yell, so, yell something. Sorry, there's an expense report I have to look over, he said. But I don't want you to focus on the negatives of this. With your vote, we'll be able to make major investments in Zotaus in the entire western West Siberian region. I've got a proposal on my desk to rebuild the Trans-Siberian Railway. If that gets through the Duma, we can prioritize hiring Zlatowski Zl Zl business for local contracting. We can work together to make sure Phoenix don't monopolize your home, but if you stick with the Sushkin, I can't make that guarantee. Alexei swore in his breath. You're not making this easy for me, Mr. Yahontov, Yon he said. I wasn't trying to. Have your decision in writing by noon tomorrow. Make the right decision here, Mr. Novikov. And with a final goodbye, Alexei's purported owner hung up the phone. Independence not a kinder master, an idealist at heart. Uh, pag pragmatism, patriotism, and prosperity. So Taos needs independence, not a kinder master. Let's go with that one. An ideal at heart. Senator Novikov, it seems I owe you a great deal, President Shushkin said with a smile. He shook Alexei's hand and motioned towards his office chair. Take a seat. Alexei took a seat. Across the enormous hand-carved desk that dominated President Shushkin's office, it was a mountain as carved of the finest wood Russia had to offer, and emblazoned with symbols of Russia's past and her future. Towards the east, the symbols of Rurik and St. Andrew stood watch like ancient sentries. Towards the west, the seal of the Novogod Novgorod Republics offered sanctuary, and the twin-headed eagle of the First Russian Republic flew high and free. And in the center, above the seals of Novosibirsk and Barnal, the pristine flag of the Federation flew unshackled. Thank you, Alexei said. It's been a difficult month. My entire staff walked off the job after Titan cut off their paychecks, not to mention I lost my apartment. Where are you sleeping? Shushkin asked. My cousin has an apartment in East Novosibirsk, Alexei said. I didn't realize he had five kids. Shushkin winced. Good God, that's, there's nothing like family, my friend. He smiled. Alexei, I know this is a difficult time for you. It's a difficult time for the entire country, but you have made the right choice, breaking free of Titan. They would have kept you caged for the rest of your life. Thank you, Mr. President, Alexei said. Unfortunately, Titan and Phoenix are already working to undermine me. Advertisements, plants, and audiences, propaganda, just name it, and the Silovics have already aimed it at me. The next election will be the most difficult for your life, Chushkin said. We'll do what we can, but the only way you'll survive a Siloviki challenge is if you show the people of Zotel that you're fighting for them. Speaking of which, I have a bill I'd like you to consider. In a democracy, the individual enjoys ultimate power and ultimate responsibility. Nice. Tax reform? Oh, we're going to lose more seats. We get low taxation. We're going to lose a lot of money, which you can't afford. We'll get more... Oh, we're going to lose seats, though. I don't want to lose seats. We get so much more PP, though. We got to get that PP. We got to. Oh, that's not bad either. The Russian dream. Uh, that's not bad. You actually give me your poor. You lose a lot more political power, which sucks. Oh, we're going to lose political power here. God dang it. Yeah, unfortunately, we're going to lose some money. I'd rather lose money and get more political power, so. Ta federal tax reform. Although the Federation has maintained a moderate policy of taxation since the nation broke away from the CSR, the people of Western Russia who have lived in a constant state of war and poverty are unable to make enough money to pay taxes on top of other necessities such as food and water. The President has proposed a series of nationwide tax cuts, a temporary solution to alleviate the tax burdens of Russian citizens and help lead the West to a brighter future. Not bad. Yeah, we're spending a lot on civilian spending. Holy smoky fathers. A little bit ahead of town. Let's go with more recon for now. Keep building, keep building. When you're done, keep building more. Uh, let's go to the next next phase too. Hey, going about to improve academic base, please go right ahead. We I want to go to the next one just so that we keep working on it. So that'll be good. Um, it's a little bit ahead of time. Get some better planes, just please. Nice. So we're just building, building, building. Oh, I don't want to lose any more money. I'm going to lose so much more seats. A new Samara. Nikita lived in Samara all his life. The city had been known by different names, ruled by Tsars, Soviets, and collaborators alike prior to the Great Patriotic War. Samara had been the economic powerhouse of the Volga River, a home to hundreds of billowing factories since the fall of the old Union. The city never recovered its former glory, even when the West had united. Its recovery was minimal in comparison to what it used to be. No warlord seemed to have an answer to Samara's problems, it would have seemed Samara's golden age had come to an end. That was until the Federation, of course, took over. 
That was when things began to change. Corporations had moved into the cities. Sabir, Titan, and Phoenix. He had never heard of these companies before, but from what he knew, they had either been rather influential in Nova Superior's until recently. The company seemed to have turned things around, however. Factories were being reopened across the city. The people living on the streets were being offered jobs left and right as entrepreneurs from far as Magadan began making their way into the city. Nikita had lived under many governments in his long life, but the acclaimed Russian Federation seemed to be the most transformative of the bunch. The Federation had introduced more than business. Local elections were being held throughout the city. This was surprising considering the Federation's reputation as being some kind of dictatorship. A series syllabics, as it was called, but what kind of dictatorship had free and fair elections? Maybe someone was lying to him, but the, from Nikita's point of view, the Federation seemed more like a democracy than the old Union. More like the Republic of Komi without the paramilitaries and assassinations, like Zykov's proposed Republic, but without the standard of collaboration. Nikita looked down at the newspaper and saw the man whose face he had grown rather familiar with over the past few months. The peasant who became president, Vasily Shushkin, Nikita looked at the headline. Apparently, Shushkin and Pokrishkin were butting heads again in the Federal Assembly, this time over industrial projects in Kazan. Weren't they friends? Nikita did just smiled and shook his head. He wasn't going to try to understand how Novosibirsk politics worked. He leaned back on the park bench as he watched the Volga River flow calmly through the city, enjoying the gentle breeze over his face. Russia had changed, and this time for a bright future. The Environmental Protection Act so we can get some more support, even though we're going to lose some output. Soviet, and some people support. For decades. The corporations have polluted the beauty of our motherland, wiping out entire forests and poisoning the crystal blue rivers of the Russia. While the president has made efforts to slow down the effects of pollution, it's clear that more decisive action needs to be taken in order to protect the Russian environment. With this in mind, the president and other like-minded ministers of government have drafted the Environmental Protection Act. This will ensure that the corporations are punished for any careless endangerment of the environment and ensure that the green of Mother Russia will survive for generations to come. Bills. The past few years have been a struggle for Magna. His wife had just passed away two years ago in an industrial accident. Oh, no. Uh, during that time, Pokrishkin was in charge, so the corporations had free reign, meaning that his family was not even comp compensated for his wife's death. Not a single ruble. Now he was left alone to raise his two daughters. Magna sighed as he rubbed his eyes, looking down at his letter from the Chita tax office with pure dread. Truth was, he was struggling to pay the bills. His job couldn't cover everything he had to pay for. Sure, things had gotten cheaper when Russia united, but it wasn't cheap enough. His daughter's education, car, food, bills, all was becoming too much for him. Papa, are you okay? Magda looked over the shoulder and saw one of his daughters uh, standing there. He could see the look in her eyes. She was afraid he'd start drinking again. It was a terrible habit he'd fallen into when Natasha died, and it was part of the reason he was in this financial mess. I'm fine, Svetlana. Don't worry about me. Why don't you head back outside and play with Elizabeth? Magda answered, mustering a weak smile on his face. <clears throat> His daughter watched him for a moment before going back outside. Magna breathed slowly as he turned back around and reached for the letter with a shaky hand. Slowly he opened it and pulled, uh, drew the folded piece of paper it contained. He braced himself as he slowly opened it and his mouth dropped. It's so, it's so low! Magna exclaimed, jumping out of his seat uh, with glee as he stared at the numbers. Magna thought for a moment before a realization dawned on him. Shushkin's tax reform. That dude actually did it! Magna exclaimed with a glee as a tear fell from his eyes. For once in his life, he had truly felt hope. For once, he could afford to pay the bills. He had money to spend on his children. Magna looked out the window and smiled as he saw. His two daughters laughing as they chased one another. They weren't out of it yet, but at least for now, they had faith again. Perhaps after all this pain, his family could finally live a decent life. Perhaps he could take his daughter to a nice restaurant for a change. Oh, God, the deficit. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, well. They will rebuild the Trans-Siberian Railway. Why not? The Trans-Siberian Railway was a vast transport network that stretched from Moscow to Vladivostok. During the Great Patriotic War, the West Russian War and the Age of Warlordism, the railway system swiftly fell into disrepair and ruin. Or with Russia once more under the control of a centralized government, we can now commence the reconstruction of this vital railway system and rebuild the immense trading network of Russia. Unfortunately, the new and improved railway system can't stretch from Moscow to Vladivostok like it once did for the time being. Ninsky Novgorod uh, Blagoveshenks will have to do. Or roadblocks. Your request to develop on the Katun River has been revoked. Governor Ed Evdokimov stated as he handed the sheet to Catherine, the secretary for the Siberia CEO. What do you mean revoked? We were clear to begin developing the land a few months ago. Catherine demanded as she exclaimed or examined the forum. Siberia was clear for the development when Pokrushkin was in charge, but President Shushkin has started a new environmental initiative, part of it preventing the development of industrial projects directly next to major river systems. That includes Srosky, I'm afraid. The president is sick of the water pollution, especially in the Ob. He's not budging on this, the governor explained. The Catherine sighed in annoyance as she placed the documents on the governor's desk. She looked outside the window, looking at the city of Barnall. They should have seen this coming. Altai's Shushkin's home of Oblast, of course. He was going to block Sibir from expanding their operations in the region. Can we get a deal or something? Make a compromise, Catherine asked? I'm sorry. The president called me himself. He doesn't want Sibir or any other corporation for that matter going near his hometown. I'm sure we can arrange for the new factory complex to be built elsewhere, but... The president's word is, f word is final. I'm afraid... Evdokomov answered calmly as he leaned back in his chair. Uh, Catherine thought for a moment. Gregory, or not Gregory, Georgi. Wasn't going to be happy about the development and Srosky being counseled, but perhaps Sibir could still find a way to expand its role in the Altai Oblast. Alright, Governor, what are Sibir's options? 
This is actually not bad. Um, why can't we do this other stuff then? Oh, the people must be supportive of us. With this one... Oh, that sucks. Uh, I don't know if there's any more seats. Well, it looks like we gotta make concessions. Do they support us now? Hmm. Okay, well, whatever then. West Russian National Highway Project. Western Russia's roads are, to put it simply, a complete mess. Bridges have been bombed out with a majority of roads still made of dirt and gravel. Trade and transport are nightmare to conduct. The West Russian road network doesn't need rebuilding, needs to be completely overhauled. From the ground up, with the passing of the West Russian National Highway Project, we can begin to address these problems and help the West catch up with the rest. Pretty much, man, pretty much. We need more state Duma seats. Um, then we gotta do that one next, too. We got a lot of conservative democracy supported, which is nice, so. With that extra political power, even though we have a much higher tax burden, it, it this definitely helps us out quite a bit, though. If we don't boost up the federal budget, where are we at? 40 billion? 47 billion? We need more political power. Like, as much as I hate to say it, we just need more pee-pee. Opening day. Shushkin smiled as his fingertips traced the sides of the brand new train carriage, the first of many to serve the people on this new Trans-Siberian railway that stretched from Nizhny Novgorod to Vlagoveshensk. This industrial marvel, stretching from the Volga to the Amur, a testament to strength of the new Russia he was steering out of darkness and into prosperity. Mr. President, the voice called, snapping him out of his thoughts, he turned to face one of his bodyguards. It's almost time for your speech. Shushkin nodded, hastily following his men to his quarters by the stage. After quickly rehearsing his speech to himself, he left his quarters and waiting outside was none other than the Siberian Falcon himself. How was a train? The president inquired curiously. They're of high quality, Pokrushkin mused. I didn't expect such fine work managed by a simpleton like you. Shushkin grinned. Maybe without corporate labor, mind you. The old, older man groaned. Before he could burst into another one of his rants on stability, Shushkin had walked away, heading towards the stage. But Kushkin sighed with amusement. How were they even friends? The president of the Russian Federation appeared on stage, accompanied by thunderous applause. Waving to the crowd, he shook the hand of the CEOs of Phoenix, Sibir, and Titan, ignoring their bitter looks before picking up the nearby megaphone or microphone. Today, we're gathered here to not only reopen the trans siberian Railway, but also celebrate how far we've come as a nation. The crowd roared in approval as the president made promises of freedom and prosperity for all Russians before finally reaching his conclusion. Mark my words, we shall not rest till this mighty railway stretches from Moscow to Vladivostok once more. Shushkin declared proudly as the crowd applauded in approval. From the Volga to the Far East, Russia stands strong and promotes women's rights. It's not just the sons of the motherland that makes it truly great, but also her daughters. Without the strength and resilience of the women of Russia, this nation would have died long before the right came. President Shushkin wants to ensure that their voices are heard in the Duma and that their contributions to Russian society are recognized. The battle for the rights of women isn't only a political issue, but a social issue. We must educate the average Russian of the brilliant deeds of Russian women and convince them to get on board with the equality movement. We're going to lose a few things here and there, but whatever. Yeah, if we have to. Ooh, 49 billion is a big number. That's a big old chunky number. We only have 70 million people living here. 80 million people, but 70 million are actually core people. We're going to lose some votes. There's a two seats in the state Duma. We just got two more. So basically, we didn't lose it too much here, so. A voting lady. Cool. Prepare for what's coming. The limit corporate influence. A new federal constitution. Why not? Oh, actually, no. I don't want to lose political power. I'd rather lose seats here first. For far too long, the megacorps of the Federation have reigned over the economy. The time is finally to come to bring them to heal and loosen the death grip they have on this nation and restore them to the people. There will always be much opposition to this drastic or drastic move, especially from Sabir and the Phoenix, but the President has stated that he is prepared to deal with the short-term consequences if it means the economy of the Federation can truly, of course, be free. Oh, we can develop other stuff? Research and development. Yeah, we can do that stuff later on. I don't want to do that yet. I'd rather... What is this stuff? Additional centrifuges. Yeah, this stuff can definitely wait. It's not like it's going to help us out that much, so... They are supportive of us, a voting lady. And we're going to need way more state Duma seats, so. Yeah. I love bribing people. Uh, Arina fumbled with her voting slip nervously as she waited patiently in line to vote. So, though she had already been queuing for an hour and the line remained nowhere near ending, her spirit remained undiminished. A Russian woman voting. Just a year ago, that phrase would have taken as been taken as a bad joke by some foolish idealism by others. Uh, but a decade ago, the average Russian would have already been considered lucky if they had been under one of the more merciful idealistic warlords, but now the standard of living for the average Russian had skyrocketed since reunification. It was a long way to go before Russia could become a utopia for the people in it, but it was getting there. 
As a young girl near the voting booth, she started getting anxious. Was the person she was planning to vote for the, really the right choice? What if the other person was a better candidate? What if she accidentally voted for the wrong candidate? For a split second, she felt like leaving, but thousands of people had fought for her to be able to vote. The president fought for her right to vote. It would be insulting to them if she just stayed home. She steeled her nerves and tried to calm down after she entered the booth and filled her, in her ballot. She carefully circled the name of the person she had planned to vote for. It was not until she slipped the paper into the, ballot, the box that she felt a weight lift itself off her heart and had a sudden realization. Her vote was going to be counted, sure. It was a bit of a childish thing to be proud of, but it felt so thrilling. The young woman giggled to herself as she began to walk home. She really could not explain it. For some time, she felt like part of a bigger picture for once, a cause bigger than herself, a piece of history. Even women can impact the new Russia. But fair, what's coming? I don't want to lose any more political power. But you do get daily political meetings, but you lose political power. The Russian dream. Because this one gives you even less political power, too, as much as I want all that stuff. Uh... I'd rather do this one first, because this looks pretty good, and we could use that immediately. Prepare for what's ahead. There's a war coming between the German Reich and the Russian Federation. The issue of Moscow is unavoidable, and the world knows it. Another war is coming, it's unavoidable. If the Federation is to be the victor in the coming conflict, it's essential that the Federation has the conditional cap capabilities to support the nation for the immense task that lies ahead. But, I think we've got to end it there, my friends. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out, my, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and let me know what your thoughts are on the second West-Russian war for the Russian Federation and Vasily Shushkin so far. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.